Hi y'all. I'm going to make a gnome tea towel holder. So I'm gonna take this uh, lid off this can of Pringles. And uh, I have a slight Pringle addiction, so I have quite a few um, lids saved. Now you could buy a, a three inch ring or whatever. You can do that if you want. So I just cut the the flat part out of this this lid. And um, I score it lightly at first and then go a little deeper each time. That's starting to come out now. There we go. First. There. Just single crochets. Just like that. And I'm crocheting over the end. See it? It's actually on the inside here. And you can put the um, stitches on the outside and kind of squish them together a little bit. Like that. Okay. And just do that all the way around until you get to the end, and I'll meet you back. And pull it through and then you can just pull that knot down like that okay so now it's covered and yeah it's a pretty sturdy ring and you'll just use this little um, thing to tie it up into the hat it's pretty and we're going to do a, um, a ring that fits around this ring or a ring around the ring three chains and then you go into the first chain under two loops yarn over and then you make a chain pinch that chain and pull through two loops um, so this is a single crochet foundation chain That's it. So continue to do this until it will fit around the widest part of this um, this loop. Just gonna make sure it fits over the middle of the ring, the widest part of the ring. I have to bring this yarn up. Through the middle here. That way it doesn't twist the um, the band. Okay, so now you can see it's flat. So now you've brought this yarn up here. Go ahead and go into the same stitch. Pull it through and keep doing single crochets. So you want to fit it on your, your um, hoop periodically to make sure that you're not decreasing too quickly. So that's why my first round I'm just doing one for one, one single crochet. But anyway, go into the next loop and it's going to be a spiral. There will be no um, leveling up after this. It's always a spiral. And you can, if you want, in the back, right here where these join, you can pull up a loop here, pull up a loop here, and pull all three together. Or actually, it's two together. So you can do that. Just kind of periodically pull a couple of um, stitches together. This is how you do it. One, two, and then you pull them all together. See, that's it. That's how you make a, a decrease.
So you're going to make decreases as you see fit. I'm not going to tell you. I don't know what size ring you ended up with. Because you could have used a, a butter dish for all I know. You know, a giant ring. You want to put this on your, your front door. And be a giant gnome on your front door. And you just put a white towel through here to make the the beard and mustache. But anyway, here we go. See, this is the front. And this is the back. And I would I would try to keep your decreases on the back just so that the front looks even. But as you go, you keep decreasing until the hat goes to a point. And you can make that point as gradual or steep as you like. But all you're doing is just putting um, single crochets, two together. I'm probably going to do another decrease here. All right. So keep doing that until you make a nice uh, a pointed hat that will fit over this this ring. I just want to tighten this up and and show you how to do this part because when you've made your foundation row, there's a couple stitches that kind of hang open, and you need to. Because this is such a splitty yarn, I'm going to do Tina's trick and go backwards. I love Tina. She's a wonderful fiber artist. She's got all kinds of great videos on YouTube and wonderful patterns. She's uh, very well known for the mosaic uh, technique of crochet, but she's she does all kinds of crochet. She's got some lovely shawls. All right, so now you see this little gap I wasn't happy with, so I'm just gonna put this through here. So I'm going around the stitch, going back through it again. There, I think that's better. It's just also a nice way to hide your ends. Also, a word about the type of yarn you might use. Um, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be sticking this in the microwave. You're not going to be putting hot, you know, dishes on it. So you don't have to use 100% cotton. Um, just use whatever you've got as far as scrap yarn goes. And... Um, Take a moment to think about, like, how would you wash this? You know, before you toss it in the washing machine, it's going to have this little plastic ring in it. So you, you can't put it in the dryer. So you could use a yarn that, you know, is, you know, maybe you can throw it in the washing machine and under cold wash, and then you could just let it dry, hang dry, or lay it flat and let it dry that way. One other thing I want to show you is, yes, this is going in, but it kind of has a lean to it because we are only decreasing on the back side here. It fits. And you're going to use this tail to tie it in once it gets to the point. So I'll meet you back when this is done. Pointy hat. I am getting to the point where I can barely get my my uh, hook in to the next stitch. And I think I'm pretty much done here. So here's the front, here's the back. You can see there is a little bit of a, a seam where I was putting in my, um, my decreases. So I'm just gonna go two chain stitches. Okay. 
Okay, and then you're going to have to fold that down. And um, you can make a loop um, out of this if you want. And then put a button right here. Or you can make a little pom-pom. But let's go ahead and uh, fit this up in here. That's going to fold over, and this is going to be where you hook it onto things. So you want to make sure that it's wide enough to fit around like a, um, you know, something that, that you might hang it on. I don't know what you might want to hang it on. Most people hang these on your kitchen cabinets, so it's kind of, or a, uh, an oven um, handle. But that's all that is. Okay. Now you could do whatever kind of edge you'd like. You could do a crab stitch. Uh, you could do puff stitch. But yeah, I just did a little slip knot and then a chain stitch. Then you could do maybe I'll just do some puff stitches. And then you can just lay it down on its side, skip a couple of stitches. There we go. See, that'll be fine. And then we do a chain, pull it up, and you go into the single crochet at the base. Pull it up, yarn over into that single crochet. Pull it up. Now one of the things I noticed about these type of puff stitches is when you get to like the third or fourth loop, it's hard to pull them up. So start out nice and strong, nice and tall. So I'll meet you back when I'm done. Okay. I gotta hide these these ends. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the the loop that we created. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna try to fold this back a little bit. Because I wanna get this up as far as it can go. I don't want to bend, I don't want to, you know, distort the shape of the, so right there, I like, I'm pinching the loop as I'm folding this back. So it's like right there. I just went through the back, put it under this next stitch, and then I'm putting it in there in the next spot. Put it through there. It's really you know, tightly tightly woven stitches. Okay. So that was three times I hid my ends after I went through a couple of times through the back. I gotta put a button or something here. I
Give yourself a nice long tail because you're going to use it to tie your button onto. Okay, so there's three. I'm going to do four stitches because this is a worsted weight. So I am making a loop. And then I'm just going to do single crochet stitches over both those chains and my tail. Pull that that tail and it closes your um, circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think eight is plenty. So I'm gonna go into this first single crochet that went around. Just tie it all, keep it all nice and tight. And I think that'll be my button. So then you do, I always do two. You could do one, nice long tie, pull it through, and then you cinch down those two stitches. Thread your needle with the last outer and just cinch it through and just have it go to the center. There we go. Just have it go in through the center. Okay. And this guy needs to be cinched and locked. This is the center. This is the end that goes around the center that you stitched over. See that? So you can go into these stitches next to it. Pull it tight and then go over a stitch and then go through three more. So that kind of locks it down. You don't want it to be too tight, but you definitely have to go over top of one yarn at least. See that there's one right here. That locks it. Go back one, that's a nice way to lock it. Okay, and so then I'm just gonna go into the center, have it come out through the center instead of at the end here. Okay, so here's your, your front, and then let's just double check and make sure it fits through our loop. It does. Okay, and that's where we want it to be, right about the center of your Take these two guys and hide them up inside the button. So let's go into the center first and come out the side. Okay, and 
here is this one. I will hide it the same way. I'll meet you back. I'm just making double crochets into the first chain. The first chain next to the slip knot is kind of like a uh, magic knot. So you can keep pulling that tight. Okay, so I'm just going to slip stitch, hello, <laughs> slip stitch that and then do two chains and cut the yarn. You're going to wear the yarn for mommy and you just cinch it. You cinch it so that it's tight. Okay, where's my your needle? No, that's not the one. This one. Okay, so we will thread the yarn. Please move, kitty. I'm so sorry. <sighs> this kitty. And I'm just going to like weave it in and out of the stitches. I'm just going to pull it, pull it tight. So this is not like the same thing we just did. This is actually going to have a little bit of a um, space in the middle. It's a little bit puffy. Pull it tight. You can grab any of these loops that might be sticking out as you go around. That'll help pull them tight too. And then just yarn over the, just like stick your yarn through. Hello kitty. Hello kitty. Hi Bubba. <laughs> He's insisting that I pet him. Right in the middle of my video. Okay, so we can cut this yarn. Okay, so there's the little nose. And you can always put a little stuffing in there if you want to before you cinch it tight. I'm not going to do that. It's just not something I'm going to do. I'm just going to sew this. Okay, Bubby, you got to move over a little bit. Okay. I'm going to sew this right here underneath the puff. That's where that goes. Or I could just do a crochet loop. And I'm just going to do on the inside part, just that one loop on the inside, because I don't want it to show through. And then so 
yeah, this is how we crochet on the back of a moving cap. Have you ever seen that? All right, so there's our nose. Do do do. And we will just hide it up into the ball, right up in here. Go through some stitches. All right, honey, can you stop moving for just a minute? All right, we are done. And I will show you a picture of our little project once we get the kitty to move over. But thanks for watching. <laughs> Please like, share, and subscribe to Crochet Your Way Today. <laughs>